Hey guys, it's the Chad, your C10 truck nerd. Well, if you haven't noticed, I'm starting to get quite the collection of 1971 GM trucks here in the driveway, and I really need to do something with one of them. So I decided today to go through and give old Bluey back there one of my professional driveway detail jobs. And I always enjoy doing one of those because I can take one of these gross mouse motel trucks that I buy and transform them into a cleaner mouse motel. I don't know. Just stick around and I'll show you what I mean. So back in my late teens and early 20s, I used to detail cars at a local car dealership and that pretty much makes me an expert. So today I'm going to show you guys how to go take one of these nasty C10s that I buy and transform them into something that looks like new. I think you'll be pretty surprised to see that all the steps that I'm going to show you today is pretty much what you would get from a professional detail shop. Nope. I pretty much just make stuff up as I go and it usually seems to work out. But my standards are way down here, so I'm never disappointed. Yeah. Now the items I think you guys are going to need for this driveway detail job is going to be a trash can, a leaf blower or compressor, a power washer, some auto or dish soap, a wash mitt, and my all-time favorite, these soap-filled SOS pads if you've got single-stage paint. Now something else that may be pretty beneficial would be some engine degreaser, but that's something I never worry about because I don't buy anything that seems to run. That and you're going to need some PPE. So you'll need some eye protection, some gloves, and a mask because we're going to be cleaning these things up and rat and mouse poop's going to be flying everywhere. And that's the last thing you want to be doing is sucking those particles in through one of your orifices. So where are you supposed to start with one of these old trucks? I don't think it really matters, but myself, I like to start with the inside of the cab. First thing I do is go through and take the seat bolts out. That way I can pull the whole seat out of the truck because I want to know what the floors look like and if there's any critters living under there. Now I would definitely wear gloves for this one because you have no idea what's under there and for me, it's poop. I mean, every single truck that I buy has poop in it. I just, I gotta get better quality trucks. Now once you get the seats out, then you can go back through and grab you a mask and a leaf blower or air compressor and start blowing all that junk out in the yard or your neighbor's yard before we go through and vacuum anything up because you don't really want to be sucking that into your nice shop vac. So you, uh, you guys should like this one. So when I go to pull the seat out, got all the bolts out and check this out. I thought I was in business with some like sweet sparkomatics from high school, but they're Pioneer 6x9s, that's still pretty impressive. But if you look uh, under the seat, that white bag, it's toilet paper. So maybe this truck will be one that has human poop in it, so. Awesome, that's disgusting. And I'm caught on the door. Yeah, what a good day. Oh, come on. Sound like a better idea, man. There's the toilet paper. There we go. Sweet. So now we'll just go through and uh, blow it out with the compressor or your leaf blower. Should be gross. So really, this is uh, one of the cleaner trucks that I bought. I mean, just a little bit of a rat's nest in here, but not too shabby. Gah. And that's why you wear a mask. So when it comes to cleaning the outside or even the inside of one of these old trucks, I like to go through and pre-treat anything that's greasy or grimy or has mold or mildew on it with some type of cleaner degreaser like Simple Green, Purple Power, or even Mean Green. Let that sit for a few minutes and then I'm going to break out the power washer and crank it up to blow the paint off mode and start washing. But one thing I would warn you guys about, if you live in the city, have neighbors, or live in an HOA, I'd be real careful about uh, blowing all that rust and mud and poop out into the street. I'm pretty sure they would frown upon that, but when you're all finished up, just get you a dustpan and scoop up the big chunks. So let's, uh, let's start washing this thing. 
So when I clean these old trucks up, I always start with the bottom of it. That way I can start cleaning all the mud and surface rust and road grime that's been under there for the last 50 plus years. Then if you're gonna power wash the inside of the truck, just open it up and blast it all out. And then I'm gonna start at the top of the truck and wash my way down. That way all the rest of it hits the ground. So let's, uh, let's get wet. So that was about as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it's clean on the inside and out. So the next step is to try to go through and see if we can get any shine out of this old paint. Now at some point in its life, this thing's been resprayed and they did a pretty terrible job. So our only hope is to get pretty aggressive with it, get some of this oxidation and loose paint off. And to do that, we're going to use my favorite, old soap filled SOS pads. And this is just going to be a lot of fun. Now I don't know if you can use these in a right or a wrong way. I could just get me a five gallon bucket, put a couple of gallons of water in it and keep that pad moist and just work it over. You can do the, you know, the Ralph Macchio, the paint the fence, the sand the deck or wax on, wax off. I'm an idiot. So let's just, let's try it. So if you guys take a look at this paint, it is pretty rough and scaly from that second paint job. Now what I like to do is I just get my soap pad get it wet and i like just to work this in a circular motion i'm going to get fairly aggressive with it until the soap starts coming out and you can really feel that paint start to smooth out a little bit so i'm going to keep working this one section at a time i'm going to keep the garden hose close by too that way if this starts to dry up i can wash the soap and the paint off and keep it all lubricated so we'll do this until we get all the way around the truck This should give you a good idea how this is working so far. You can see where we use the steel wool here. It's nice and smooth already, and this is really coarse. So we're gonna keep working the rest of the truck and see how it turns out. You know, working on these old trucks just reminds me of Pops. You know, as a little kid, he used to take us up to that big hill on the edge of town, stuff us in some tires and roll us down. I mean, really, those were, those were good years. That was bad. Yep.
Well, I'm not gonna lie, this paint turned out way better than even I expected it to, and really all we did was remove a little bit of oxidation. Imagine what it's gonna look like when we put the old buffing wheel to it. Now I have my old faithful products that I use almost every time, which is my Turtle Wax Polishing Compound and Meguiar's Cleaner Wax, but I had a buddy holler at me the other day and said, hey, would you be interested in trying something different? And I said, no. But then I thought about it and said, okay, what do you got? He says, why don't you test out that Meguiar's Ultimate Compound and Ultimate Polish? I was like, well, I do like Meguiar's and it has the word ultimate in it, so I'm in. So if you guys haven't, please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you come back because we're gonna put that Meguiar's Ultimate Compound and Polish to the test. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.